Hi, my name's Trevor, and I'm the author of Lot Mono Engine, a light 3D game engine featuring a software renderer which you just saw running. Today I'd like to talk about the process of rasterization. Uh, so let's begin with an overview. Uh, rasterization is the process of determining screen pixel coverage for a triangle. Le Mona Engine's rasterizer uses the concept of half spaces, where each triangle edge divides screen space into an inside and outside half, and evaluating the sign of the edge equation at a pixel center can determine which half it lies in. The pixels we are interested in lie within the intersection of the three inside half spaces of the triangle. A brute force approach to testing pixels would be to traverse the triangle's bounding box, but more sophisticated te techniques that try to do less work exist, one of which is the hierarchical descent method, which divides the screen up into a tile hierarchy and tests tiles before pixels, hoping to quickly exclude blocks of pixels that lie outside the triangle and include blocks of pixels that lie within. This is the approach we use in the engine. So the Mona engine partition, partitions screen space a couple of ways. The first partition is a bin, a 128 by 128 pixel boundary. This division serves the front end of the renderer, where triangles coming off the geometry stage are explicitly assigned to the bins they overlap by copying down to an associated uh, bin buffer. The bins are about cache friendliness and division of thread labor. Within the bin, screen space is further divided into four 64 by 64 tiles, which are the targets for the rasterizer. For each triangle, we use the edge equations to generate step tables for each edge and recursion level, sufficient to allow us to step into this 64 by 64 tile, processing pixel blocks at a 16 by 16 and 4 by 4 pixel level rejecting and accepting blocks as we descend. Each block has a reject and accept corner, corners which are closest and farthest from the edges respectively. A typical triangle will have larger blocks accepted in its interior, while around the edges the routine will descend into the 4x4 tile blocks emitting pixel coverage masks. So let's turn to the code. Here we are in the raster setup function. Uh, inputs are the vertices of the triangle in screen space and we start by mapping those vertices into local bin space and converting them to a fixed point format with 8 bits of subpixel precision. This matches the DirectX spec which is a good reference uh, when writing a rasterizer. I use 64 bit integers for all setup computations to avoid integer overflow. Uh, so here we compute the step deltas for each edge uh, compute the bias that we will use later for handling pixel ownership and find the triangle's bounding box. Note that the rasterization origin is set to the bin center to maximize the utility of our fixed point format. All right, so that is our raster setup. Now we'll jump into the rasterizer code itself. Uh, which continues the setup process. So here we initialize the fragment streams and here we use uh, the bounding box to determine if this is a small triangle where small means contained within a 4x4 pixel bounding box. The reason I catch small triangles is I found very small triangles cause problems with the hierarchical uh, rasterizer. The geometry stage rejects small triangles that don't have any pixel coverage, but those that do can be so small as to not generate sufficient bits to step accurately from tile corners. So I have a dedicated small triangle rasterizer which skips step table setup and calculates edge values directly at pixel centers. So let's take a brief look at the code for this small rasterizer. There's a bunch of initialization and broadcasting of data into the vector registers. Now the mainline rasterizer steps recursively down a tile hierarchy. So we are always emitting blocks of pixels aligned to tile boundaries. But here the triangle bounding box could lie anywhere within the tile, so we have to accommodate for that. This code determines 
which of the 4x4 tile blocks the triangle bounding box straddles and steps over them. We use uh, screen space, X and Y, uh, values to compute the edge values directly at each pixel, uh, evaluate the sign of the value and build a coverage bit mask and emit that out to our stream. Right, so returning to our mainline rasterizer, We, there we see. Okay, so if this is a regular sized triangle, the code flow continues on to uh, build step tables for each of the edge uh, edges and recursion levels. So the edge tables are in 32-bit fixed point format. Uh, keeping them that way is essential to be able to leverage the power of SIMD. However, there are limitations on the size of a tile that a triangle can be rasterized to using 32-bit uh, values, and this limit seems to be uh, 64 by 64 pixels. Hence, our bin is divided down into four of those 64 by 64 raster targets. Uh, so we have both uh, accept and reject step tables, which step down tile corners at each recursion level. The final level of the uh, reject step table steps edge values from tile corners to pixel centers and includes the edge bias we computed earlier. Proper tie breaking rules for pixel ownership must be considered. So adopting directx standards, we displace the bottom right hand edges uh, ever so slightly. So we formed our reject and step tables. Now we compute our depth step tables using the depth interpolants computed ahead of raster setup. We will step depth values down tile corners in a similar fashion to the edge values. This will let us perform a hierarchical depth cull on the raster fragments by finding the minimum depth of our fragment at the four corners and comparing that to the value for the relevant tile in the hierarchical depth buffer. So with those step tables formed, we are ready to descend into each of our 64 by 64 tiles that comprise our 128 by 128 pixel bin and rasterize. We perform a scalar depth check for each 64 by 64 tile to see if we can't trivially depth reject the tile, else we proceed into the rasterize tile function. So here we compute our, our edge values at the trivial reject and accept corners of the tile in 64-bit. Uh, we, if we can't trivially reject or accept the tile, these values will seed our descent into the tile hierarchy. Here we are multiplying two uh, fixed point numbers with eight bits of subpixel precision, which yield a number with 16 bits uh, of subpixel precision, uh, but these extra bits can be discarded safely. So we shift them away uh, and map the number into a 32-bit integer for later broadcast into the vector registers. So we descend into the tile. We take our depth seed value and add it uh, to the depth step table for the current recursion level to get the depth value for the four corners of each of the 16 tiles, find the maximum and compare it to the values in the depth buffer and generate a bit mask describing the result. Similarly, we take our edge equation seed values, add them to the reject step table for the current recursion level to get an edge value for the trivial reject corner of each of the 16 tiles, generate a bit mask using the sign bit, add the accept uh, step table, generate a second bit mask, and write down the reject values, which will seed the next recursion step. We process the accept bit mask uh, using our pop count to count the numbers of bit set and bit scan to get the tile index. We emit the accepted fragments to the relevant tile stream. We manipulate the reject and accept bit masks to identify tiles that can be neither trivially accepted or rejected and then step through those. Note the integral use of the vector registers. Broadcasting the seed values, adding the step table values, building the bit masks. So this process repeats down the recursion levels. 
Uh, here is the code for the 16 by 16 tiles. And let's, it's uh, essentially the same as the next recursion level up we looked at, but let's take a look at the code for emitting a 4x4 block to the fragment stream. You see we write a buffer index and a coverage mask in a packed format and uh, two of the three edge values for the tile corner which will be used in the shader to generate barycentrics. And that is the end of the rasterization process. The fragment streams can now undergo shading. Now, for more information on shading and where the rasterizer fits in the back end of the renderer, please see my code review of the renderer back end and check out my website. Thanks for watching.